do you think it's possible? So the JavaScript used to be uh, for the front end of the web. It's now increasingly so being used for back end, like mm -hmm. running stuff that's like behind the scenes. Yep. And it's also starting to be used uh, quite a bit for things like TensorFlow.js. So starting to actually use like these heavy duty applications mm -hmm. that are using neural networks, machine learning and so on in the browser. Is it possible in 10, 20, 30 years that basically most of the world runs on JavaScript? This is a dystopia and a nightmare to some people. <laughs> um, when, when I when we did ASM.js at WebAssembly, I would joke and meme people with scenes like Neo waking up in his pod in the Matrix, and he's all skinny and weak and hairless. Um, and you know, you realize in the future that you're living in some simulation that it's all running on JavaScript, and you just scream forever. Um, it's possible. Gary Bernhardt uh, does these funny talks. He did Watch JS, and then he did this. Uh, the life and death of JavaScript, I think it's called, where he he took some clever ideas that actually have a, a, a thread of uh, credibility to them. But I mentioned software fault isolation. It, in the old days when we were using computers, we, we said, we're gonna use the Unix you know, monolithic monitor. And it's the privileged program. This is before you even had hardware rings of protection. Those, some of the early 60s operating systems used hardware protection zones. But Unix is privileged and the, program that runs user code in a process is is hosted. It, it's the guest in the host. And, and you get to suspend it. You get to kill it. Uh, if it crashes, it doesn't take down the whole OS. It's a wonderful idea. Um, but the call into the kernel is expensive, the system call, so-called. And this has even been optimized now for things like getting the time of day so it doesn't actually enter the kernel. Um, and meanwhile, Hardware architectures and virtualization techniques have gone in a different direction, even to the point where you can do software fault isolation very cheaply without entering the operating system kernel. And so you get unikernels and exokernels and very lightweight VMs. And so Gary took this idea and said, JavaScript will take over computing because the system call boundary is too expensive. So everything ends up in JavaScript with these lighter weight yeah. isolation enforcement mechanisms. Yeah. <laughs> it's not totally beyond belief. Yeah. Um, it'd not, be WebAssembly too. 